So Hi, everybody. Welcome to Rachel's Reviews and the Rotoscopers. This uh, interview is going to be uh, in written form on Rotoscopers, and it's going to be here on Rachel's Reviews in video and audio. So I'm really excited about this interview. I've been looking forward to it for about a year. <laughs> so much fun. Today, we have Zach Parrish here with us, who is the director and creator of Us Again, which was one of my favorite movies of 2021, not even just shorts. I loved it so much. So I'm so delighted to get a chance to talk to Zach. Thank you so much, Zach, for coming on the podcast. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. I'm sorry it took us this long for <laughs> this to happen. That's okay. You have a really, really good excuse. Uh, your adorable, do, yeah. your, your adorable baby. <laughs> yeah, who turned who turns one on Friday in two oh, days. So yeah, it's been it's been a crazy year for sure. Yeah, yeah. If y'all aren't following Zach's Instagram, you really <laughs> should. It's super adorable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's mostly it's mostly my baby at this point. It was like yeah. originally lots of other things, and now it's uh, almost entirely my daughter. Yeah. 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 Uh, so why don't you introduce yourself your first time on the podcast, and tell us a little bit about how you got started as an animator. Sure. Uh, so my name is Zach Parrish. I'm uh, currently an animation director uh, at Netflix. Uh, I got into the animation industry in 2007. Uh, I went to school at Savannah College of Art and Design uh, in Savannah, Georgia, and then I went to, I did online schooling at Animation Mentor. Um, while I was working in the visual effects industry, I started um, on Alvin the Chipmunks was my first movie, um, and then went to, to Sony Imageworks and worked on Cloud's Chance Meatballs, and then eventually found myself at Disney in 2010. Um, and I was at Disney for 11 and a half years um, as an animator, uh, animation supervisor, head of animation, workflow supervisor, uh, and uh, director. So I directed a short called Puddles, and then I most recently directed Us Again. Um, and that was one of the last things that I did uh, before, before making the switch. Very cool. So when you are working as an animator on a film, like you, I think you did Big Hero 6 and some yep. of these other films. So what exactly is your sort of daily work uh, as, a, as an animator? Do you focus on like one particular character? Because I know sometimes they do that. Yep. Or do you focus on a particular scene that you're working on? Or just depends? Uh, all of the above, yeah. So uh, it, it really depends on on the production, on on you know what what part of the film is is ready to be made at that time because it's a very stacked process where things are being created and then animated and story is still happening and and all of that. And so uh, your but your daily your daily routine as an animator is um, usually a series of shots is how it tends to work uh, at least within kind of the Disney sphere. Um, you get you know a run of you know four or five shots that that share continuity so that you can uh, think about your shots more from a from a filmmaking standpoint. Um, but then sometimes it's divvied up. You know, if it's a back and forth conversation, you know, I might take the shots of Hero and somebody else might take the shots of Tadashi because they are you know the 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 lead on Tadashi and I'm the lead on Hero or something of that sort. Um, so it really it really depends on on the moment on the animator. On, on availability, but um, our job is very much to uh, bring the characters to life, you know, to to imbue them with that illusion of life and to be kind of the the accompanying body performance to the fantastic voice performances we get from from the the actors, um, which which is really trying to from a from a leadership standpoint is trying to get you know a hundred ish animators to all think from the same part of their brain for one character in order for it to be consistent from an emotional standpoint, from an acting standpoint, and then, you know, uh, animation appeal wise, making sure that they all look the same as well. Yeah, that's what I think is, is crazy that we've never had a animated uh, director get nominated for best director. Because when you think about the, the amount of pieces that are having to be juggled and the amount of visions for characters and the, you've got the story and the music and the, you know, there's just so many pieces that they are all having to keep together for years, years and then, yeah. <laughs> these movies take, but that, I don't know. I just think it's kind of crazy that even <laughs> Miyazaki is, wasn't that like, what? Yeah. He got a lifetime achievement award, I think, but yeah, 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 yeah. never been nominated for, for a director. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's interesting because that, that's everything you said is so true about animation. It's, um, it's such a long process and you never know what you have until it's done. Um, and you have to have 
planned for it and, and envisioned it, but then it all kind of comes together in this really long and really complicated process. Um, and not to say that live action is easy, but at least you get to see you get to see what you're doing <laughs> um, yeah. and, and you can play with it in editorial and you can, you can shoot coverage and things of that sort. And then you can, you can find the movie a little bit more, which they do in, in storyboard form. Uh, but, but that's such an abstraction of, from what the actual film is. And so it does take, it does take a lot of vision uh, to be a director. Yeah. Now, if you have sort of an idea for a scene that you think, Oh, I want to animate it this way. I want to do this thing. Do you just go for it and then show it to the director or do you go and get kind of, is it easier to get uh, forgiveness than permission? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, sort of. I think, uh, I mean, it depends on the animator. It depends on the, the director. Some directors are very, very specific about what they want. Um, you know, I remember on, on Tangled, you know, you would get a scene sometimes and it would be like, have fun, explore. And then sometimes you would get, we drew these boards very specifically. Yeah. You should probably just match the storyboards. And obviously it's not literally matching the storyboards, but like there's a little bit less wiggle room. Um, but, uh, but then also, you know, if, as you get <laughs> older, like me, you set, you tend to take more risks and ask for more forgiveness than permission. And, uh, and you, and you get to, you get to live in that character's, in that character's shoes and kind of, you know, own their soul for a moment. And so you do go, well, I think they would do, they would do this, or I feel like they might do this or, um, but usually it's proposed in kind of a rough, in a rough way where you show like a, re a reference pass or a sketch pass or something like that. And that's, you know, very emblematic of the animation process where it's, it's all rough to find. The entire yeah. thing is rough to find. And so directors and animation supervisors are used to seeing things pitched to them or scribbled on a note card and then shown to them. And then we, we talk about it and collaborate. And that's, that's why I love animation so much is it's so collaborative um, that, uh, that it, it just becomes, it just becomes this kind of fun conversation of what if isms all the time. Yeah. Yeah. That was really, if, I don't know if you saw the, the Howard um, documentary uh, from 2020, yeah. but yeah, Howard, it was yeah. so good. And just to see the behind the scenes, the collaboration of everybody working just on the voice work of, uh, of Beauty and the Beast was just so inspiring to see, yeah. you know. Yeah, and those are masters as well. Yeah, so it's yeah, like, yeah. It's like a master class in in. I mean, their their talent is is out is beyond my comprehension. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that was a master class in in everything, yeah. in talent yeah. and in, in collaboration for sure. Uh, so have I know that Disney has always done shorts. Obviously, I mean, you mm -hmm. had things recently like Paper Man and a Feast and things like that. But it seems like with Disney Plus, we've seen like an even more of a push for shorts and also series. Yeah. Uh, is that something that you felt that they were trying? Is that is, is that part of what you ended it, up getting to do us again? Uh, kind of. It's, it's interesting. I think a lot of it preceded because, again, these things take so long mm -hmm. uh, to happen. A lot of it preceded Disney Plus. Um, like I'm thinking back on, you know, the, the inception of the short circuit program and, and that's, you know, a series of short films, um, that is on Disney plus. And when we started that, I did one of the very first shorts, uh, there were six of us, I think that were greenlit. Gosh, I don't even know how many years ago, 2015 or something like that, 2016. And at the time that was just an opportunity to give more people in the studio an opportunity to, to have a voice, to try on different leadership hats. Um, to tell a story that they wanted to tell um, that was, you know, kind of uh, rough and scrappy and that, you know, you had a kind of a small amount of time, a finite amount of time and a finite amount of people. Um, and it was just see what you can make and then we'll share it with the studio. It was never even intended to leave the, the, the interior of, of WDAS. And, uh, and then this thing called Disney Plus happened and they were like, hey, we we think we might actually put these on, you know, Disney Plus. We're like, holy crap, this is so cool. Cause you know, you get yeah. you know, hundreds of, of thousands of people watching your stuff that you thought was, you didn't even know your mom was ever gonna get to watch it, let alone all of these people around the world. And uh, and so I think that started kind of the ball rolling of, of getting shorts, you know, up and running again, cause there was a little bit of a hiatus of shorts at, at uh, Disney Animation for a little bit. Um, and then, you know, Disney Plus is just this like this amazing place where again you have this this huge audience and there's this hunger for 
new voices, new stories, different types of content. And so I think, you know, Disney is really leaning into that and, and is trying to, to fill that need, but also provide opportunities for more people, which is, which is fantastic. Cause everybody, you know, wants to work on new stuff and different stuff and get their, get their voice heard. And so it's, it's a really exciting time. Yeah, it's it's like such an exciting time for animation because now because we just have so many more platforms where people can can have their work uh, exhibited on, which is so great. I mean, I, I you're now working for Netflix, and I'm so excited about Netflix. So many of things like Arcane was so amazing, and uh, and seeing their work with Ardman, I'm super thrilled about that. I mean, because yeah. they just have not been able to get the theatrical legs in the United States like I think they deserve sure. um, so to have this this arrangement with Netflix is very exciting I think and yeah. and I don't know it's just it's a it's just a very exciting time to be an animation fan I think yeah I think it's it's an like I said it's an opportunity for so many people to get to get to tell their stories and, it, and there's a there's been a shift and I don't know if it's the pandemic or if it's streaming services or what it is but there's an appetite for, for more and for different and for specific and for personal and um, having all of these different platforms who are all trying you know, to, to put those voices out there. It's amazing because then you get something like Arcane that might not have existed five years ago because it's such a specific audience. And that's you know, the, the kind of interesting and cool thing about Netflix is it's, there is no brand at all, <laughs> you know, it's, it's anything and everything and it will, it will find its audience. And so it becomes, it becomes these, these unique things that, yeah. um, that blow up. I mean, Arcane was, is huge and is for good reason. It's, it it's was incredible. It's so incredible. good. And also I just adored the Cuphead show. It was <laughs> really, it is so good. It's so fun. It's so yeah. fun. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, let's talk about us again. So how did huh. you get the idea for this short? How did it kind of come to you? So it was back in uh, probably 2017 ish. I was, I was, I was in, into my thirties and I was starting to feel uh, the aches and pains that go along with crossing that threshold. And I was thinking about stories that I wanted to tell. And I, I kept finding myself, you know, thinking about my age and aging and what that means to me and, and realizing that I had a bit of a negative, uh, a negative thought on it. And that I had this, this, this desire to want to be young again, uh, even though I was only in my thirties. Um, but I was, I had this fairly cynical view on it, but I would talk to my mom she was in her 60s and she would talk about all these things that she was going to do when she grows up. And, and I, I had this realization that like by my definition, I'm old and by her definition, she's young. And, and that totally like got me thinking and, you know, kind of broke my brain as far as um, what, what is age and what and it's all, it's all relative. It's all a state of mind. And, and, and that kind of led to this, you know, these conversations that I always have with my wife about being, present and living in the moment and appreciating where you are and, and the people around you. And so all of that kind of coalesced into this idea of, you know, I, I really wanted to tell a fountain of youth story. I had a, a bunch of weird ideas, um, but they all, there was always this moment about this couple dancing in the rain, um, young again, dancing through the rain uh, as, as the fountain of youth. Um, and so that was basically what I pitched. I pitched this idea of, of this of this elderly couple who uh, who have this one magical night and uh, and this world of dance. Um, and uh, it was one of the four pitches that I did at Disney, and it got picked up. And then then we really started delving deeper um, into into why why am I why am I thinking about this and what is my perspective on all of this and uh, dug into you know my grandparents and and how. I had this dichotomy of views on aging because of them. On one side, I had um, my my paternal grandparents who uh, sold their house, bought an RV, traveled the world, went to every national park in the United States, um, and had this very active life um, post retirement. And then my 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 maternal grandparents, uh, they you know were much more homebodies. They were more sedentary. Um, they kind of lived that life that I think our society kind of puts on to older people and expects of older people. Um, and so I I realized that I had this like yin and yang in my in my brain as far as like 
what the view on aging is. And so that's really where the dichotomy of, of art and dot came from, is it felt like a really cool place to kind of showcase both of those perspectives within one relationship and how they push and pull on one another. Well, the music and the choreography was so key and added so much to the short. Uh, how did that all come together? Uh, the um, both the choreography hard. and the <laughs> music. <laughs> it was hard. Um, I mean, it was it was it was intentional from the beginning. I mean, even in the in my original pitch, um, I had a, a playlist of music um, I, that I I knew I wanted it to be in kind of this this soul funk range of music. Um, because I wanted something that um, the characters that I imagined in my head, you know, would would have listened to, but also something that felt like it could be on the radio today. I wanted everything in the film to kind of have a, a then and now kind of feel to it. Um, and then I was a huge fan of Keone and Mari, who ended up being our choreographers. I, I had been following them on, you know, social media and things like that for years. And, uh, and I was talking to a friend and he reminded me of this video of them dancing as an, as an older couple to uh, Bob Marley, to a Bob Marley song. And, and so I used that and I used a, a bunch of clips of Keone and Mari dancing and doing different uh, performances as, as examples of how we could build a world where, where they have conversations via this dance because they, they do performances that are arguments. They do performances that are, you know, uh, proposals. They do celebrations, they do fights, they do sadness, they do everything because they are storytellers. Um, and, and that really helped kind of shape uh, the entirety of us again. And then, uh, and then as far as process, it was just really hard because it's a, it's a chicken and egg problem, right? Like we, we never really, you never had any of it until you had all of it. And so we would work a little bit on the story. Pinar would write, Pinar Toprak was our composer who was incredible. She would write uh, themes and temp scores and things like that for us to try to like, for the, the story artists and for Keone and Mari to try to imagine what this film is going to be. Uh, Keone and Mari would, you know, would kind of like have some ideas for dance and things like that, which would maybe inspire the storyboard artists. And then, and so we kind of tried to lift the entire film at once um, until we had the storyboards, you know, locked off, then Pinar uh, did kind of a final pass of the music, and then we did a final pass of the choreography, and then we could actually make the movie once we had the music, the choreography, and the story, then all we had to do was, you know, make the movie. <laughs> yeah, just that. That's all just you had to do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's great. How did you come up with Art and Dot's character designs, both young and old? Um, so I, I'm in a interracial relationship, and so from the very beginning, I... I, you know, I pitched the story as, as an interracial couple um, because I, I don't feel like I see it enough on, on screen. And, especially and then in animation, especially in animation. Yeah. And, um, and, and to that note, you know, you also in animation or even in live action, you don't really see that many stories about older people and especially older interracial couples, which obviously is, is more rare, but all the more reason to, to see it on screen. Um, and, uh, and so, uh, so that was kind of always, that was always there as far as who the characters were in my mind. Um, but the design language uh, was, was a bit amorphic. You know, I knew I wanted something simple for the design language of the film. I really wanted it to feel like a, like a, like a miniature set. Um, we used very shallow depth of field and tried to use simple forms and simple textures, but realistic materials to make it feel like this small, believable, but intimate world. I wanted it to feel like it was just it was just for those characters, and so the design process for those characters was was a lot about you know kind of reducing and simplifying and caricaturing, um, you know the the wrinkles and things of that sort. Um, but I wanted I wanted them to feel like they were they were young, lively, energetic, you know, dancing kids, you know, who who aged in in different ways and. Uh, and I, and I think the team did a fantastic job of, of, of making two characters that feel real and warm and, and believable and, and loving, which I think is loving was the thing that I really wanted to feel between those two characters. Yeah, I, I love the ending when the rain has left and you see that just sadness on the part mm -hmm. of art, but mm -hmm. then they have their dance together and there's like that hopeful ending. I think it's so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely like I said, it, it's so much of that comes from my mom and my wife. You know, it was because during the development of this film, you know, that there was the constant question of, 
you know, if this is art story, do we need dot? If this is art story, do we need dot? And I was adamant, you know, that it that it needed to be the the relationship, and that you know, I I knew that he needed to have this realization for himself, and that he needed to make a decision for himself at the end of the film. But I I firmly believe that it needed to be about realizing what he was missing in her as well, and what his decisions were, how they were affecting her, even though she's she is her own person, and that's why she lets go of his hand. Like I wanted to make sure she had her autonomy. And that she wasn't dependent upon him in any way, but um, but that he needed to see that this is not only affecting him, it's affecting her, it's affecting, and that he's missing her because that is my story. That's that's what I miss. That's what my wife brings to our relationship besides a million other things. Uh, but she's that constant reminder of, 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 of look at the world around you, look at how, you know, how beautiful this is and how lucky we are to have one another. Um, so dot was always super important to that to that moment in in the film. Is it hard with animation in general, but especially in animated shorts, to keep your belief in the project? You just have moments where it's like, I'm so tired of you know, working <laughs> on this. I'm so tired of these scenes. I'm so tired of like that. You start to sort of lose confidence in the project. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I I should probably say no, but uh, oh yeah. <laughs> You know, I think you, you don't want to give up necessarily, but you, I think it's the journey of any artist. I think, I think you don't have to be a director. You don't have to be telling a story. You can be doing a drawing. One moment you feel like, I think I, I could take on the world. I'm the best, you know, and, and I believe in this so strongly. And this is everything I ever wanted to do. And I'm so glad that I did this. And then, and then you make a wrong mark and then feel like, why am I even doing this? I should have gone to culinary school, you know? And, uh, and so, yeah, that those, but when you're, when you're, when you're directing a film or, or, you know, developing a film, those, uh, that roller coaster is much more extreme <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because, because it, all, it all hinges. Yeah. It yeah. all hinges on those decisions. And so, yeah. um, yeah, you, your, your confidence definitely can get shaky, but I, we knew, we knew there was something special, you know, I still, I love, I love the film. I love how it turned out. Um, but we knew throughout the process that like, this is unique and this is special. And it meant, it always meant something to me, um, from the beginning. And so you always have that to kind of pull you through those harder times. Yeah. I, I, well, I'm glad you stuck it out. Cause I really enjoyed it. I, I, in fact, it, it almost hurt Raya a little bit because I I was so emotional after the first time I saw it that I was just kind of like, well, that was good, but that was so good. The show. Was so good. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you. No. It was it was a, it was a huge honor to even you know, yeah be attached to to Raya, you know, sure. in theaters. It was middle mid pandemic, so yeah. Was, yeah, maybe not the biggest audiences, but um, but still, it's just such yeah. a cool such a cool opportunity to be showcased in that way. Well, one last question. What advice would you give to someone who wants to get into animation? Oh my advice. gosh. Practice patience. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, what I, what I tend to tell people um, when I, you know, talk to students or, or anything like that is uh, to not forget to live. It's sort of the purpose. It's sort of the message of the film, but I think it's also um it's, it's something that I, that I really needed to learn when I was going to school. I was so focused on, oh, I need to learn Maya. I need to understand this animation principle. And I, and I, and I kind of closed out, I became so focused that I closed out the world a little bit and I didn't experience. And so much of what art is, film is, is an interpretation. It's a view on the world. And so getting out, experiencing, going to museums and drawing and going to the park and watching people and, and watching movies and TV and just observing life is, it's always going to end up being useful. It's going to be better for your soul, uh, but it's also, it's going to be that thing where you go, I remember this one time I was at this park and I saw this couple and this guy did this thing and it becomes a character specific moment. And, and so I think you know people can learn different packages of software and they can they can do all these different things and you have to learn how to do those things in order to actually do a job but I think in order to have a perspective as an of as an artist period I think experiencing life is is probably the the biggest secret in my opinion. I think a lot of us learned uh to 
appreciate life more because of the pandemic. I think that was something we all kind of were like, wow, I took that for granted. And I took that for granted, <laughs> you know, and yeah. we, uh, we're all hopefully appreciating, uh, yeah. the, all the different beauties of life more because we had to have taken away for a while. And that, and that really made, you know, talking about us again, again, uh, it, it made that film mean so much more to me as well. Cause you know, we finished it from home. We were about halfway through the process when, when, when the shutdown happened. And so we finished that film from home and, and it just got more and more and more <laughs> emotional and personal because of exactly that, you know, and, and this guy who's, you know, cloistering himself in his house, you know, and his wife who's just trying to get him to get out. Like it, it, it all, it all became so much more real and, you know, having a kid pit yeah. during the pandemic as well, it's, it's, a, it gives you a lot more perspective. And so, um, yeah, I hope we all, we all can get out there and live. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming and talking with us. I really appreciate it. It was so much fun yeah, and good friend. luck uh, in Netflix. And I hopefully we'll get to hear from you again soon. Yeah. Let's do it again. Yes. So right. if people want to follow you on social media, all that fun stuff, how can they do that? Uh, yeah. If you want to see my daughter, she's on, on my Instagram uh, <laughs> at uh, underscore ZAP. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, I'm on Twitter, but I don't really, I don't really tweet, uh, but I'm laser with three A's, three Z's, three E's and three R's. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. And then my website uh, is zapmyshorts.com. Uh, you can see some of my old student work. I kind of put it all out there so that you can kind of see uh, the process, um, you know, uh, how bad I was and, and what that looks like. Um, and, you know, I still have a long ways to go, but it's all out there. Well, thanks again. I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, we'll be in touch. Awesome. <laughs> Bye, thanks everyone. So I'd like to thank Zach for coming on the podcast. This was so much fun to get to talk with him. Please make sure you check out us again if you haven't watched it. It's really special. And you can follow me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. So please check that out. And also make sure if you are listening to the podcast on uh, iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews five stars. I really appreciate that so much. And also if you are watching on YouTube, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and make sure to check out the written portion on rotoscopers.com and uh, please check out the Patreon and merch store. And we have hashtag animation junkie shirts and thanks so much, everybody. We'll talk to you later. Bye.